If there's one man every FC Chelsea fan is thankful for, it's Roman Abramovich. No one in their wildest dreams would have thought that a college dropout would not only buy one of the biggest football clubs ever, but also become a big player in the Russian oligarchy. But that did happen, and we have one question. How? Sadly, Abramovich is not one to delve into the details of his personal life. However, that changes today. Join us as we tell you a truly Russian story of one orphan buying FC Chelsea. The Beginning We know it's hard to believe, but Abramovich wasn't always surrounded by the riches he is today. He was born in Saratov in southwestern Russia. Orphaned at the age of four, the Russian has a tragic backstory. His mother, Irina, died of blood poisoning, while his father, Arkady, lost his life in a construction accident. With them gone, the responsibility of raising a young Roman fell into the lap of his grandparents, and judging from where he is today, we'd say they did rather well. In contrast to the bright skies of London, Abramovich's childhood was marked by the greys and the harsh tones of Siberia, but he cared little for them. Somehow the young man made it to college, only to drop out. He dropped out of two colleges. Now, Abramovich may not have been book smart with him being described as an average academic and nothing more, but he was street smart. At a very young age, Roman showed promise of a budding future entrepreneur. How did it start for him? Abramovich began his business journey during his time with the army. Back then, he made a quick buck by selling stolen gasoline to army officers. Looks like someone is giving the states a run for its money. He later moved on to selling rubber ducks from his apartment in Moscow. Not the most useful of ideas, but it earned him quite a lot of cash. It also served as proof of his ingenuity when it came to amassing wealth in an otherwise strict Soviet Union. Having tasted success, Abramovich was hungry for more, and this is when his wife, Olga, entered the picture in 1987. She proved to be the business partner that Abramovich needed all along or more appropriately, the business opportunity he needed all along. He used the 2,000 rubles from his parents-in-law to expand his business to prohibited items like deodorants and perfumes, which were very clearly illegal, but let's be honest, you don't get to be an oligarch without crossing a few lines here and there. His success with contrabands pushed Roman to explore other business avenues, like manufacturing plastic toys and automotive parts. Abramovich also made a massive amount of cash from pig farms and oil conglomerates. His actual good days came with the perestroika reforms that legitimized Russia's business dealings. However, shortly after, Abramovich was taken in custody for stealing government property in the 90s. He used false documents to steal a train full of 55 tankers of diesel. However, he was let go, and as we're going to see next, Abramovich was able to bounce back from the short hiccup. His rise to the top. As innovative as Abramovich's business ideas were, they're hardly the type to put someone in the kind of spotlight that the 55-year-old seems to be enjoying today. So how did he put himself on the front page? Well, it was all thanks to his friendship with Boris Berezovsky, another Russian business oligarch. With Berezovsky in his corner, Abramovich had a straight line to President Boris Yeltsin's office as the former member of the Russian Academy of Sciences was a part of his inner circle. Thanks to his connections, Abramovich found himself in a nice cozy spot in the Kremlin within the year. And the good fortunes didn't stop there. Roman was slipping in and out of top circles and managed to score his first billions as he acquired the large oil company Sibneft. Some years down the line, President Yeltsin privatized Sibnef, and so both Berezovsky and Abramovich struck up a partnership as they bought the business for $100 million, even though it had a market value of $600 million. The acquisition laid down the foundation on which Abramovich could build his empire of wealth as he sold his Sibnef stakes for approximately $1.8 billion. However, Abramovich had to finally move on from this venture as his partnership with Berezovsky fell through. In a shocking turn of events, Platon and Lenin filed a civil suit against his longtime business partner in the High Court of Justice in London in 2011. Berezovsky accused Abramovich of breach of trust, blackmail, and breach of contract, 
all the while seeking over three billion pounds in damages. Tapes were presented, witnesses were called, and statements were made. And after a year-long battle, the High Court dismissed the lawsuit on the 31st of August 2012. It almost seems like Lady Luck has a favorite here. This and the facts that the courts deemed Berezovsky an unimpressive and inherently unreliable witness. Yikes. The next chapter in his life. With the Sibnev chapter closed, Abramovich was on to new things. Like most oligarchs of his time, Roman became involved in the aluminum wars of the great 90s. Those were tough waters to navigate. In Abramovich's own words, every three days, someone was murdered. Still, the Russian braved through and ended up making a payday out of it. Abramovich later went on to dabble in politics as he became governor of the far eastern Chukotka region after winning 92% of the vote in 2000. Interestingly, when Yeltsin resigned in 1999, Abramovich extended his support to Putin. Abramovich fared rather well in this time compared to the fates of the rest of his oligarch friends who were either condemned to prison or, worse, exiled. He treated himself to four properties in New York as he splashed $96 million on his real estate portfolio. What's impressive is that the billionaire didn't keep his riches for himself. He ended up spending 180 million pounds on schools and building new infrastructure in Chukotka. With a net worth of $12.3 billion, that kind of spending hardly makes a dent in his fortunes. The Purchase of Chelsea FC Up until then, Roman Abramovich was a name known only to those interested in keeping with Russian politics or filthy rich people. The former governor's actual time to shine came in 2003, when Abramovich went ahead and bought himself West London's largest club, the one and only FC Chelsea. The club's previous owner, Ken Bates, later went on to buy Leeds United. The deal, worth 140 million euros, put Roman Abramovich in the front of the footballing world. Many were confused as to why the oligarch made a move. And, well, it turns out his whole philosophy in life is to bring in professional teams. At least, that's what he told the Financial Times. Abramovich's purchase of the club marked a new era in FC Chelsea's history. Under the management of Jose Mourinho and others, the club went on to win two Champions League, five FA Cups, and five Premier Leagues, giving us some of the best football we've ever seen along the way. Chelsea was the most successful English trophy-winning team during the oligarch's ownership, with 18 major trophies in its trophy case. That puts it on par with Manchester United, which only managed 16 major trophies in the same period. During this time, Abramovich has shown up to nearly all of the matches, and judging from the expressions on his face, his heart and soul are in the game. Where is he now? Sadly, Abramovich seems to be going through a rough patch these days. He's been sanctioned by the European Union and the UK, given his home country's invasion plans. The UK government has long since frozen his UK-held assets, and that includes Chelsea FC. That is why he handed over the keys to the club to the Chelsea Charitable Foundation on the 26th of February 2022. He announced plans to sell the club on the 2nd of March 2022, owing to the situation in Ukraine. And then on the 12th of March, the Premier League disqualified Abramovich as the director of the Chelsea Football Club. As for who owns the club now, it's Todd Boley. Abramovich is also under a travel ban. Looks like being a Russian isn't doing him any favor in the current political situation, as he's being accused of siding with Mr. Putin in the invasion of Ukraine. The sandy-haired businessman's fall from grace has left football fans divided. But one thing's for sure, the Russian oligarch has always been one to rise from the ashes whether it's tough childhood circumstances, a bad business deal, or trouble with the law. Alright, that's a wrap for today's video. What do you think of Roman Abramovich's rise from orphan and college dropout to football club owner? Let us know in the comments section below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Bye now.